All right, guys, I have amazing news. The clouds have finally receded. It's been all week of just all cloud at night. But with this, I'm gonna, I plan on showing you the full extent of what this uh, telescope can do. I'm just gonna go through a lot of more objects because before, the other times this week, it's been too cloudy. Like there's been only a little bit of stars that are able to be seen. So I can't really review any deep sky objects. So I'm gonna go out when it's still light out so then I can get my mountains aligned and stuff before it gets too dark and hard to see. I've already got it uh, nice and level. Oh no, it's not level anymore. It's not good. I'll fix it. All right, for this part of the video, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell you how to align this mount. First of all, make sure that that level, that the tripod is level. I'm using a camera tripod. You probably have the actual telescope's dedicated tripod, which I suggest using. But still, make sure it's level. And also make sure you've raised it up enough so that it'll be comfortable at eye level. All right, I've got it like that. Next step, make sure that this, the actual telescope, is level like that. I use the level meter on my phone. Next step. Basically, you want to turn the telescope this direction until it can't turn anymore. There's going to be like a stopping point, and that, that's good. you got to put it in that position. After you've put it in that position, you want to move the actual tripod, this part, not the telescope, until it's facing due north. I think the telescope may come with a little bubble. Like, this is a bubble level right here. That's actually way out. All right, I'll fix that in a second. But it's kind of like a bubble level, but it's a bubble compass. You point it due north in the magnetic north. And which I have right now, I used my phone again. And uh, yeah, after you've done that, you gotta go on the auto star, which I've already shown how to do, I think. But I'll do it again. And you basically pick, well, it depends on what, you, what you're doing. There's three uh, alignment things. I suggest doing the, basically you've got, you gotta put in the date. For me, I think it's the fourth. And it's about, I'm gonna put in eight o'clock cause that's when I'm gonna be actually be observing. It is not daylight savings, I don't think. So you, then you have easy, don't do that. Don't do what I just did, don't touch these. Cause then it's not level. All right, I gotta fix a few things. I'll be back. All right, I think I got the mount aligned. So here's what I did. As I said before, I got it all the way to the clutch or whatever, but the but the stars I used. I did the two star line because I thought that would be the most accurate and I picked two stars on the opposite ends of the sky. First star I picked was over here, uh, Dubai, I think it's pronounced. I don't think you can see it on the, well, maybe, I think this might be it on the camera, I'm not really sure. Wait. Maybe, anyway. So it's in uh, Big Dipper well, or Ursa Major and the other one I picked was of course the Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is the famous one in, let me just find it with the camera here. It's, it's gonna take a second. There it is, that big bright red one. That one right there, that's Beetlejuice. Anyway, Beetlejuice is a nice bright red one on the opposite end of the sky as the other one, right? I think that I, that is actually Dubai right there. Dubai is also a bright one. Yeah, yeah, you can even see the whole... No, not really. Anyway. Yeah. So, that's good. Got the mount aligned. Needed to get the mount aligned. That's how. As a test, um, hmm. What should I use as a test object? Alright. Um, I'm gonna pick something here by myself, but you guys in the comments... I'll just point out this guy say something like that. You guys in the comments tell me what I should look at next. Please, let me look at something interesting. All right, now I think I'm gonna go with the classic uh, Messier 42. It's the Great Orion Nebula. Everybody loves it. So there you can see the, um, uh, there's the Orion's belt, you can kind of see. And then below that, that's Rigel right there. Below that is M42, which I already did a video about. So go see that if you want more info on that. All right, as you can see here, I'm slewing it over to the Great Orion Nebula. And it should be there since Beetlejuice is right next to it.
All right, so it slewed over there and it was super accurate. It was in the field of view of my 26 millimeter Plossel, which is the only 48X, but it was in the field of view in the, in the edge, the uh, upper left-hand edge of the field of view. Maybe you can see here. But it is some brighter stars. Can't quite see it through the camera. Yeah, it slewed over to it just fine, so I suggest the um, two-star line for uh, maximum uh, accuracy. Alright, the next object I'm going to slew the telescope over to is M45, the uh, Pleiades star cluster. Which is good because it's not that far from Orion right now. It's just, it's uh, nearby, it's in Taurus, so pretty close. And uh, after Pleiades, I think I'm gonna go with Mars and then maybe even Crab Nebula. Unless you're one the Crab Nebula, I'm probably not gonna be able to see with this telescope and this light pollution. Here in, uh, here I'm a Bortle Class 5. I think I'm on the verge of a Bortle Class 6, which is uh, not great. And uh, plus the, uh, uh, Messier 1, the Crab Nebula is super small. All right, in terms of the Pleiades, it did really well. It slewed right onto it. Now it's the Crab Nebula. That's the challenge round, if you will. It's really small and really dim, and I'm probably not going to be able to see it. So we'll, we'll see what I can see. All right, the telescope did not perform that well on the challenge round number one, which was uh, Crab Nebula, as Crab Nebula is just too small for this telescope. 90 millimeters aperture. What is that? Is that the ISS? My phone told me that there was an ISS flyover just about now. I, mean, I think that's a plane. You'll have your answer in a minute. I think that's a plane, actually, yeah. Never mind. Don't get all excited. <laughs> just a plane. All right. I don't know what this is, but I don't think it's a star. There you go. Oh, that's too zoomed in. All right, I'm just gonna go to regular zoom. Yeah, I don't think there's a star. I'm pretty sure that's a satellite. I'm sorry, it looks like a big ball. It doesn't look like that <laughs> without the camera. I don't know what's going on. I think it's messing up the focus because it's so dark. But yeah, anyway, I'm pretty sure it's a satellite. I'll check. All right, guys. just check. This is the International Space Station right here. That's nice, right? We got a little visit from the astronauts on there. You say hi. Yeah. Alright, that was neat. That's not neat. <laughs> My telescope malfunctioning. There was a little failure. I was, uh, I slewed it over to M81, or Bode's Galaxy. And, uh, I was looking at it, trying to find it, because it's so, because it's so dim, because of how light polluted it is here. Bode's Galaxy is in the Big Dipper. You can't really see it. But anyway, it's in Big Dipper, and, uh, yeah, the motor freaked out and slewed me over somewhere else. So I've got to deal with that problem. Okay, I discovered the problem. It's low battery. I haven't changed the batteries in, like, maybe two or three months, so that's probably it. Considering I use it every night, I'm going to pin it on the battery. So uh, I'll go fix that.